Manhattan Project came to fruition in 1940 with concerns about development of a nuclear project by Germany. The U.S. began searching for ways to develop a new superweapon in case of attack by either Japan or Germany. This committee was headed by physicist Robert Oppenheimer and a team of scientists. The technological advances made while working on the Manhattan Project introduced an entirely new era in war and life as a whole for many people. Those who created it had mixed feelings towards their contribution to society. Many of them crumbled under the burden of the fact that their invention was taking so many innocent lives. During the development of the bomb, physicists wrote this letter saying, Recent developments indicate, briefly, that the subject is more important than I believed when I last spoke to you about it. The stuff will apparently be more powerful than we thought. The amount necessary appears to be less, and the possibilities of actual production appear more certain. The way to full accomplishment is still exceedingly difficult, and the time schedule on this remains unchanged. At 5.30 a.m. on July 16, 1945, Los Alamos scientists detonated a plutonium bomb at a test site located on the U.S. Air Force Base at Alamogordo, New Mexico. Oppenheimer chose the name Trinity for the test site, inspired by the poetry of John Don. Tensions ran high at the test site, where many scientists and military personnel had gathered to witness the test that would alter the course of history. When the bomb was finally detonated, an intense flash of light and sudden wave of heat was followed by a great booming echoing in the valley. A ball of fire shot into the sky, and the giant mushroom cloud that resulted stretched 40,000 feet across. With a force equivalent to 21,000 tons of TNT, the bomb obliterated everything in its path. The nuclear age had begun. At the Potsdam Conference, Germany presented an ultimatum to Japan to become a democratic state or face prompt and utter destruction. With no surrender in sight, the United States made the call to drop the atomic bomb on Hiroshima on August 6, 1945. And after Japan refused to surrender yet again, another bomb was dropped on Nagasaki on August 9th, just a couple weeks after the conference. Many miles away, the raging might of searing flame, crushing force, and deadly radioactive water is seen falling in a killing mist as the great circular wall of sea closes in on the guinea pig fleet. The combined forces let loose, swamp the nearby ships, and crush their thickly armored hulls like cardboard. Seen from the air, the towering waves set in motion appear to be only shallow ripples. The bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki represented a change in warfare because of the sheer power that it held. The shift in warfare occurred not particularly because of its ability to destroy cities, because firebombers could already do that, but that it was effective because of how powerful one bomb was. In Hiroshima, a single 15 kiloton bomb called Little Boy was detonated over the center of the city. Everything within a one mile radius was completely destroyed and about 70% of the city's buildings were burned. By the end of 1945, an estimated 1,400,000 people had died in Hiroshima alone with survivors continuing to suffer from long-term effects of radiation. In Nagasaki, where a slightly larger plutonium bomb was dropped three days later, 7.6 square kilometers of the city was leveled, and 74,000 people had died by the end of the year. This is Hiroshima, the day after the atom bomb exploded over Japan's seventh largest city and etched its message of doom to an empire. Heat traveling at the speed of light cast a shadow over Hiroshima and over the land of the rising sun. These films, taken by the Japs and confiscated after the armistice, tell a dramatic story of destruction and terror that followed in the wake of the first atom bomb loosed over a military target. The radiation from the bomb caused the grounds around the cities to be uninhabitable. Many people who came to provide aid to the afflicted areas were affected by the radiation and some even died from radiation poisoning. The fallout that leached into the atmosphere caused radioactive rain to fall. The effects of the thermal radiation from the bomb was devastating. The heat caused by the blast was so intense that anything flammable within the blast radius burst into flames. Almost 90% of the medical personnel from Hiroshima were killed or injured in the blast. So many injured civilians did not receive medical care and died painfully. Increased rates of cancer in survivors caused the death toll to continue to rise in the years following, and survivors are still being monitored to this day for health effects. 30% of the city's population was killed some by radioactive gamma rays, and others by the heat of radiation that showed its intensity in many freakish ways.
No other atomic bombs have been used as a weapon of war since they were dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki in 1945. Almost immediately, people recognized that the bombs represented a new type of superweapon, one that often did more harm than good. The power that the bomb represented became a pawn in ongoing tensions between Soviet and American forces and ushered in the Cold War era. The Manhattan Project and resulting bombs permanently changed the world and continue to shape our international relationships today. I, I don't think, I don't think you it? can do anything, and I don't think you're going to be successful unless they respect you. And they have no respect for our president, and they have no respect for our country right now. You were asked about whether uh, you, would con you would rule out using tactical nuclear weapons against ISIS. Have you ruled that out, or is that st something you'd contemplate? I, I think I'd probably be very, very late compared to my uh, opponents that are running. So you would, you would rule in the possibility of using right, nuclear weapons against ISIS? Well, I'm never going to rule anything out. Right. And I wouldn't want to say, even if I felt it wasn't going, I wouldn't want to tell you that. Right. Because at a minimum, I want them to think maybe we would use it. Okay. Right. In a rare appearance, unleashing an ominous warning. The whole of the U.S. mainland is within our firing range, and the nuclear button is on my desk. It's not a threat, he said, but a reality. The president reacting at a New Year's Eve party. We'll see. We'll see. After a ballistic missile launch in November, Kim Jong-un now claims his nuclear weapons program is complete. Experts analyzing the video said it was the most powerful missile yet, possibly capable of striking the U.S. East Coast. But North Korea still has technical hurdles to cross. <laughs> Don't break it. Is it a video? Mm. Is it a video, Sarah? <laughs> yes. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> can you do that? Hey guys. So this is my gender reveal party. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> Oh my god, it's a bomb! Oh my, oh my god! Haley! Haley! You're having a Manhattan Project! <laughs> Is this oh. the shit? It's Whoa! Okay, maybe you should not stand right in front of the camera. <laughs> Sorry! <laughs>